The Mortal Instruments series is a young adult fantasy series by Cassandra Clare, and today I'm going to give you guys a guide on the shadow world or the world Cassandra Clare made. I'll be going over terms, places, and characters in the Mortal Instruments series, and in this video, I plan to erase the info dumpiness of this novel. Okay, so if you're completely new to the Mortal Instruments series, and you just decided to read it now, then I don't think you'll be able to understand what I just said, and this video might be really helpful for you. So, as a person who has already read the books, I would say that this series is amazing and definitely worth reading, but my main issue with it is because of how much information is given to the audience, and there were times when I just needed to stop reading and digest everything that was happening because so much things were being explained. An example of this was Jocelyn Frey talking to Clary everything about Valentine and the City of Glass. So because I felt that, I decided to make this video to help people who are about to read this series, and before getting into it, I had to comment on the fact that I'm going to be basing my explanations on the books, and not the movies or the TV series, because there are many, many differences. So let's get started. So the first term, which in my opinion is the most crucial term in the entire series, and that term is Nephilim, or Shadow Hunter. So, basically, a shadow hunter is a person of angel descent and is tasked by the angel Raziel to protect mortals against demons, and overall, they're the sort of police force of Raziel. Number 2. Mundane Okay, so a mundane is a mortal who doesn't have any angel or demon blood inside them, or in simple terms, they're just regular humans. The third term, the sight. The sight is an ability shadow hunters naturally have. But on rare occasions, mundanes can have this ability. In order to further explain what the sight is, I had to talk about something first. So in order for mundanes to not know they exist, shadow hunters make something called glamours to hide the entire shadow world. But if a person is gifted with the sight, they are able to see through those glamours. And that's what the sight is. The fourth term, the clave. The clave is the political body of all active shadow hunters. And they make rules, laws, and decrees that shadow hunters are supposed to follow. The fifth term, runes. So one of the most important things in the entire series are runes. Runes are marks etched on shadow hunter's skin, and they can be used in different ways. It could be a healing rune, a bravery rune, an angelic rune, and so much more. But not everybody can bear these marks because runes are very powerful things. And when someone can't handle its power, they either die or become something called Forsaken. And that's our sixth term. So like I said earlier, not everybody could bear runes, and they turn to Forsaken. And a Forsaken is a creature who went insane because of the runes, and they can never be turned back into a human again. They don't know who they are, and they're just basically mindless creatures. The seventh term. Stele. A stele is quite a basic thing in this series, and it's basically a tool used by shadow hunters to draw runes on their bodies. The eighth term, downworlders. Downworlders are hybrid creatures who live in the shadow worlds, and they can come in different forms, like vampires, werewolves, warlocks, fairies, or the fey folk. The ninth term, parabatai. Parabatai is a term used among shadow hunters, and this makes two shadow hunters bond and fight for each other. They swear an oath to protect each other for the rest of their lives, but they can never, as in ever, fall in love romantically with each other. Obviously, I'm not going to say why, because that will definitely spoil you for the Dark Artifices trilogy, which is the sequel to the Mortal Instruments. The tenth term, Witchlight. So, like the Stele, I would say that Witchlight is quite a basic thing in the shadow world. It's basically a rock used by Nephilim for light. The eleventh term, Seraph Blades. Again, another basic thing. So Seraph Blades are swords shadow hunters use to kill demons and downworlders. These blades are carved by the Iron Sisters, and we'll get to who the Iron Sisters are in a bit. So going back, Seraph Blades are the primary weapons of shadow hunters, and in order to use them, they had to say an angel's name, and the sword will glow. And once that happens, that's the time you can use the sword. The twelfth term, Silent Brothers. So the Silent Brothers are shadow hunters who dedicated themselves in very powerful runes. The reason why they're called Silent is because they literally don't speak, 
and instead, they talk to you telepathically. Another trait the Silent Brothers have is their healing, and their sort of immortality. When a Shadow Hunter gets injured, the Silent Brothers are called, and they're like the medical force of Shadow Hunters. They reside in the Silent City, and the runes they use slows the process of aging, thus making them sort of immortal. The thirteenth term, the Iron Sisters. So, like I said earlier, I'll be talking about the Iron Sisters. And the Iron Sisters are the ones who craft the weapons of Shadow Hunters. They're the ones who made the steles, the Seraph Blades, Shadow Hunter gear, and a lot more. The fourteenth term, Idris and Alicante. Let's talk about Idris first. So, Idris is the home country of Shadow Hunters, and this country is given to them by Raziel. Most Shadow Hunters grew up in Idris, like spending their entire childhood there, and Alicante, or sometimes called the Glass City, is its capital. The 15th term, the Accords. Okay, so before jumping into what the Accords is, I have to explain a couple of things first. So generally speaking, Shadow Hunters have this sort of racist attitude towards Downworlders, because Shadow Hunters feel like they're purer than Downworlders, because they were from Angel Descent. The racism was so much, in fact, to the point that they were Nephilim killing Downworlders just because they were Downworlders, and Downworlder rights weren't that accepted. In fact, on some occasions, there were Shadow Hunters who kept the dead bodies of their killed Downworlders as spoils in their basement. Most notably, Aloysia Starkweather from the Infernal Devices trilogy. So, because of all that, the Clade decided to make the Accords, which marked peace between the Downworlders and Nephilim. But despite those Accords, there is still a bit of racism. The 16th term, Valentine Morgenstern. Okay, so technically it's not a term, it's actually a name of a person, but you know what, I'll just go with it. So, let's talk about Valentine Morgenstern, or the main villain in the series. So, Valentine is a shadow hunter who hated Downworlders to the point that he wanted to erase all of them, and that hatred will slowly transform to his goal of erasing all shadow hunters and Downworlders in order to make the whole world pure again. I'm not going to explain in detail as to how he wanted to destroy the entire shadow world because of a lot of City of Glass spoilers, but I just said the general idea of what Valentine wants in the series. Another thing you need to know about Valentine is that he had a son named Jonathan Christopher, and that he and his son were said to be killed in a fire, and the series opens up at least 14 to 15 years later, with the clay believing him dead despite not finding his body. Also, it is said that Jonathan Christopher was killed in that fire, having found a skeleton inside the burnt house. The last thing you can know about Valentine is that he made an organization called The Circle, and originally, The Circle's goal was to increase the number of shadow hunters and reform a couple of clave laws, but as Valentine slowly turned evil, the goal of The Circle was to purify the world based on what Valentine wanted. The 17th term, The Institute. The Institute is a local power base of shadow hunters, and these places represent the current shadow hunters in that specific area. The 18th term, the Consul. The Clave has a lot of positions, but the most important one is the Consul. The Consul is like their president, and it's the head of the Clave and the highest position available. The 19th term, the Inquisitor. Like the Consul, the Inquisitor is a high rank in the Clave, and they're the ones who investigate Shadow Hunters if they either broke the law or the Accords. Also, they usually serve as the prosecuting attorney during Shadow Hunter trials. The 20th and final term, the Mortal Instruments. To be clear, I'm not talking about the name of the series, but the actual instruments. So, according to Shadow Hunter legend, the angel Raziel came out from a lake called Lake Lynn in Idris and gave Jonathan Shadow Hunter, or the first ever Shadow Hunter, the Mortal Instruments. And there are three instruments the Mortal Cup, the Mortal Sword, and the Mortal Mirror. Let's talk about the Mortal Cup first. So the Mortal Cup is a cup used to make the first Shadow Hunters, and in order to use it, they make the person drink from it. But like bearing the runes, not everybody could survive its process, and if someone can't handle it, they die and become forsaken. Second, the Mortal Sword, or sometimes called Malartic and the Soul Sword. 
So the mortal sword is kept in the Silent City with the Silent Brothers, and this sword is often used for interrogation and by the Inquisitor. If the mortal sword was pointed to a shadow hunter, the shadow hunter is forced to tell the truth. Finally, the mortal mirror. Not that much is known about this because nobody has actually used it, and according to Alec Lightway from the City of Bones, nobody knows where it is and nobody has seen it for ages. So those are all the terms I'm going to explain in this video. I really hope that it would help you when reading the Mortal Instruments series, and it gave you quite an introduction to the Shadow World. So how about you? What's your favorite Shadow Hunter series? Let me know in the comments down below.